Hey, ODU 102, it's me, Dr. D, making our lecture video for this week, week seven. Remember, we did not have class um, on Monday. So in, in lieu of our lack of a class meeting, um, I just thought I would go through the lecture video um, with you all via Zoom. So here we are. We're in our second to last week of the semester. We're going to be... Um, we're going to be almost done pretty soon. So this is our second to last class session. Let me close some of these windows and we will, um, we're just going to jump right into it. Um, this week, we're talking about managing your time and priorities, which is maybe something we should have talked about earlier in the semester. Um, you know, something kind of funny about talking, uh, talking about time management here at kind of the end of the road. But um, I think this is especially useful to think about as we move into the last week because as you will all recall, um, you know, the deadline for completing work for this class is the uh, is the tail end of week eight. Um, so you'll have to get any work that you haven't completed turned in um, before spring break starts. So the kind of final deadline for all work in this class is um, Sunday, March 5th. That's going to be the last day of the class. That's going to be the last day of the semester. Um, so any work that you haven't done, manage your time and priorities in the next week and a half to make sure that you get those things turned in so that you can get partial credit. I uh, I don't want to see anybody not pass ODU 102. So uh, in this presentation, we're going to be talking about six different things, although I'm sure we'll give um, varying levels of attention to each. We're going to talk about the benefits of time management, we'll talk about time management specifically in college. We're going to talk about um, every professor's greatest enemy, procrastination. Um, we're going to talk about how to manage time, how to prioritize your time, and strategies for time and task management. So pause real quick and um, jot down whether or not you find these four statements to be true or false. That's going to be kind of part of your like attendance credit for class this week. You're going to hand me a piece of paper when we meet on Monday for week eight hand me a piece of paper that kind of reflects on whether or not these four statements are true to you. Um, go ahead and pause the video so you can see the four questions and then we'll jump right back into it. Okay, so, you know, there are uh, different ways that time management um, should be thought about from the perspective of high school versus college. In high school, you know, your learning is linear. You're going to class every day. You're doing your homework typically every day. There's like a very consistent like daytime, nighttime routine. When you're in class, you're learning. When you're at home, you're doing your homework. And then when you go to school the next day, your learning is related to that homework. College learning is um, non-linear. You're working on large projects. Slowly, you're focusing on the process of your learning. You're not necessarily doing um, every day. Like take our class, for example, we only meet once a week. So the way that you would plan for ODU 102 is very different than the way you would plan for a high school class. It's very different than the way you would plan for a class that meets three days a week here at Ohio Dominican. Um, of course, we know that procrastination, at least at a glance, is a skill that many of us feel we have. I know that many students have kind of shared to me like, oh yeah, I'm, I work better at the last minute. I have like a real grace under pressure. And that that's a myth. That's not really true. You're not good at working at the last minute. You've just taught yourself how. Um, so in this presentation, we're going to talk about why um, you guys are wrong about that. <laughs> um, we're also going to come up with ways for you to describe and articulate and then evaluate your own time management skills. Um, we'll discuss the importance and process of prioritization, um, which is something that the chapter uh, definitely outlines. And we'll, of course, talk about the importance of goal setting and motivation. And the timing for that is um, useful because last week in your discussion activity, um, you got to reflect on some goals that you set at the beginning of the semester. So a single mishap, poor time management can set into motion a series of events can seriously jeopardize a student's success. In English class is an example of that is if you miss the rough draft of a major project, you're not going to get that valuable feedback from your English teacher that you can then kind of further and better develop your final draft. That's just one example of many. Okay, so if we think about kind of the worst case scenario in a, um, in a time management crisis where you fail a class and um, you have to retake it, um, kind of the slide sort of breaks down 
you know, how much that would cost you in a very literal sense. I don't, I don't have a sense of how similar this is to um, the, you know, the tuition at Ohio Dominican, but even if you're on a scholarship, even if you have a source of funding that is not your own, um, you know, you want to, you want to kind of get through the university on pace, not necessarily quickly, you know, some, there's something to be said about the patience of learning, but, you know, you definitely don't want to be incurring this kind of loss, um, especially early in your career as a college student. So, you know, time management in college, like we kind of talked earlier, is different than high school. And um, this kind of second point, the way that your school time is managed by educators and parents or friends and mentors and guardians um, is different now. You know, you're sort of on your own. You're an adult, whatever, however you want to think of it. Um, the responsibility is more on you to manage your time. Um, you know, to be doing your homework, to be doing a reading, to be working on major projects, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the nice thing about college is also one of its biggest challenges, which is that because you're, you know, being treated under the assumption that you're going to think critically about your time management and how you budget your resources in terms of time and preparation for different tasks, assignments, studying, and activities, is that you, you actually have a lot of time. You know, if you think about your regular class schedule, if you're taking like a full-time load as a student, you have four classes total. Maybe two of those classes meet three days a week, but only for 50 minutes. Maybe one of those classes only meets one day a week for two hours. And then your fourth class meets Tuesday and Thursday for 90 minutes each day. Day to day, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of time to do your homework, to study. It's also time to maintain social obligations, work on an activity, be involved in a club or sport, and of course, work if you have a full-time job like many of us do. Um, the challenge is not finding the time, it's budgeting the time. So um, the Pew Research Center found that 82% of teens report that their typical high school assignment were only a paragraph to one page length. As your time at ODU ramps up, you're going to find the page count for assignments going from two pages, not two paragraphs, to five to seven pages, to 15 to 20. And the depth of that writing is going to be very different than the kind of work in high school. It's going to be able for math and science, the co complexity of the concepts that you interact with are going to really ramp up. So when you're thinking of homework, you know, you don't want to approach it with a high school mindset, which leads us to procrastination. Go ahead and pause the video and kind of respond to these three questions. You're going to hand these to me when we meet on Monday next week, and I'll give you attendance credit. So pause and then come back when you're done responding. So I have a little joke about procrastination, which is when I was in my PhD program, my wife would come home from work. And uh, depending on how clean the house would, sh would be, she would say, how much did you get done today? And I, oh, I did the dishes. I vacuumed. I dusted. I mopped. I did all this stuff. She'd say, no, no, no. How much did you do on your dissertation? Um, so you, people get creative when you want to task avoid. Um, I would love to sort of hear some task avoiding strategies that, uh, that some of you guys utilize. Um, here's the problem with procrastination. Uh, it's like a, it's very addicting. You know, it's very addicting to wait till the last minute to complete an assignment. The problem is when you make that a habit, it becomes something that you do chronically. And then you fall under the trap of thinking, oh, I work well at the last minute. I'm graceful under pressure. No, you're not. Your work is terrible. <laughs> and you're not learning from that work that you're doing at the last minute the same way. If you think back two weeks to our lessons on memory, remember we learned that actually it's important to really stretch out the learning process. It's to read your text, sleep on it. And while you're sleeping, you know, remember it's kind of encoding that data. Um, another problem with procrastination is if you save everything to the last minute, now you have to fully sacrifice some or most of your work. And, you know, if you get a habit of task avoidance, you're going to miss some really important things. Now, of course, people procrastinate for all kinds of reasons, lack of energy, lack of focus, fear of failure, the perceived lack of time. And again, I'll sort of give you some wisdom from um, Mrs. DeGenero. That's my mom. She used to say whenever I said, oh, I didn't have time to do it. I didn't have time to clean my room. I didn't have time to do my homework. She would say, no, 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 you didn't make time. And that's kind of the, the gist of what we're talking about today. But um, there's many reasons why we procrastinate. Um, the problem is, again, not to keep harping on this, but if you do that, you're losing time. You're losing time towards your degree. You're losing time towards you know the act of learning, 
which is sort of the reason why we're here. You know, if you were here to shotgun knowledge, that would sort of be a waste of your time and money. Um, you might lose track of your goals. You know, if you're only able to focus on the very next task, you might lose sight of the big picture. You know, why am I up at five o'clock in the morning writing this paper? You know, oh, well, I have to get it done. Now you're not thinking about, well, I want to be this major so I can get this job so I can have this kind of career. Um, and, you know, when you get into that, that line of thinking, you're going to lose your self-esteem. You're going to feel bad. You'll do poorly on your work, which at least in my case made me feel very bad as a student. And all of that is going to contribute to your stress. And as we know, stress takes away from your time and your wellness that allows you to kind of slowly and deliberately do the work that you should be doing. So what are some strategies for beating procrastination, getting organized, keeping a calendar, writing things down in a notebook or a dry erase board, putting away distractions. You know, I don't even know where my phone is. So I guess I'm, I'm above distraction right now, but getting rid of the phone, turning off the internet, getting your work done and then rewarding yourself while you're doing that. You know, oh, I got a task done. I'm going to go for a little walk. Or I'm going to go to the gym or I'm going to play video games for half an hour um, and being accountable. You know, that's the, the great thing about college is that you're not alone in your journey. You know, you have friends, you have, you have loved ones, close friends, new acquaintances, people that are supporting you here, but also people that are going through what you're going through. So it's, it's like nothing better than having a friend in a hard class and kind of working together to overcome the challenges. So how do you overcome those challenges? Step one, managing your time. Go ahead and pause the video and write little responses to these two questions. And this first one especially really relates back to the chapter that you had to read for this week. So definitely pause and take a second to respond to these two questions. And we're back. Okay, so an online calendar, great way to keep track of your activities. I have like three different online calendars. I don't know how to connect them, but they're very useful. They help me get through my day. Um, you know, a lot of different ways to manage time. This is like study skills. I don't think there's a one size fits all approach, but some good tips are getting good at predicting how long a task will take. Once you figure out, you know, oh, my science homework is going to take longer than my English homework. Now you can kind of strategically predict the amount of time you'll have to focus on that. Um, and being accurate in your timekeeping, you know, you're, you're on your own. Okay. You're not letting your teachers down when you do poorly on your homework or you don't do your homework, you're letting yourself down. So it's strategic and important to be really honest and really accurate when you think about how much time you need to devote to a particular task. Okay, of course, it's also important to recognize that some tasks can be dependent upon the completion of other things first. I'll give you an example from my world. Last week while I was gone, I was in Chicago for a conference doing a presentation and I hated it. I didn't wanna do it. I was not wanting to go. One of the reasons is because in two weeks from now, I have another presentation that I'm more excited about, but it wouldn't have been strategic if I prepared my second presentation first. So I was making sure I was dependent on the time and the order in which I would need to complete these different tasks. And then of course, we know different tasks take different amounts of time. You wanna be strategic about that as well. Go ahead and pause the video and take a look at this table. This kind of breaks down like a general, you know, how long some activities might take. So pause that, take a look at this, and then when you're ready to move on, we'll move on. Okay, so prioritization, self-management, what can you do, when can you do it? Pause the video, just write up little responses to these questions. You're gonna print these out or handwrite them and um, show them to me when we meet again on Monday. And when you're done, come on back to the video. Hey, welcome back. Okay, so how can you prioritize now? There's a lot of different approaches to this. You could do the thing that takes the most amount of time and do that first so that if you're fatigued, you can do shorter tasks after. Another thing to do is start with the hardest thing, you know, like get the struggle out of the way, save the easy stuff for last. You could flip that and start with the easy stuff, knock out a few tasks right in a row, be confident, be energized when you take on that, that bigger project. I don't think there's a wrong way to prioritize as long as you're thoughtful in how your methods can sort of support you in your goals. Okay, so we get this little Eisenhower decision matrix. This is just like a little chart that you can read um, that kind of helps you to map out the tasks in your day. We have um, tasks that are important, not important. We have tasks that are urgent, not urgent. And, you know, this column, these two rows are sort of about, you know, is it something you need to do? 
or something you want to do and urgent, not urgent is whether or not you, you have to do it timely. So like, for example, something that's important and urgent is a paper or applying for an internship. Something that's important, but not urgent is that you need to get your flu shot soon. That's very important. You don't want to get the flu, but you don't have to go do that tonight. Um, another example would be studying for an exam next week. You know, you don't want to have, you don't need to study for the whole exam next week right now, but it is important to keep that in mind. And then, you know, you kind of see the not important column as well. That, you know, okay, yeah, there's an Amazon sale. That's not really important, but the Amazon sale ends tomorrow. So you got to look at that or like laundry, you know, you got to have clean clothes, but um, it's not like the most important thing in the world. Uh, especially for some of you, I've smelled this class. Yikes. Um, just kidding. Uh, and then, you know, not urgent and not important, watching TV, kind of zoning out, checking social media, et cetera, et cetera. So sometimes you're not going to have time to do all your important stuff. How do you make that decision? Well, some things to help you figure out how to make that decision. So knowing what you need to do, knowing how you'll get it done, what you'll need to get it done, what skills you need, deadlines, and you know flexibility. Not every plan works out. Sometimes you have to kind of change course, and that's okay too. Uh, now, again, it's not a one-size-fits-all situation, but it is important for you to know the environment wherein you can be the most successful. For some people, that's the library at night. For other people, that's their dorm room in the morning. Totally a personal preference, but as long as you can figure out the best way for you to achieve, um, it's important to know that, that you're in the right space, that you're distraction free and that you're working in the right time. For me, that's the morning. I'm a morning person. Maybe you all aren't. So it wouldn't make sense for you all to sit down and do your homework at five o'clock in the morning, which is when I sit down and grade homework. Um, at the same time, maybe some of you like being in the library at 10 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night. I like being over there reading a book, not thinking about school. Different strokes for different folks. Now, this kind of connects to one of the activities this week. So definitely th be thinking about goal setting and motivation. Something I want everybody to keep in mind. This is an acronym, SMART goals. What's a SMART goal? A SMART goal is specific. It's measurable. It's attainable. It's relevant. And it's time bound. The worst thing you can do to yourself is set these big goals that you just have no chance of completing because then you're going to feel bad that you didn't complete it. Uh, you'll waste time. You'll set yourself back for the future. SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, and relevant. Here's an example of some SMART goals. Go ahead and pause the video and take a look at this table. And when you're done, we'll move on. Here's another table, the seven ways to stay motivated. You might consider these as well. Pause the video, check them out, and then we'll move on when you're done. Okay, so strategies for task man management. Again, Different study styles, different personalities are going to approach this a little differently, but you can set top three tasks for your day. You do the Pomodoro technique, which is um, Pomodoros are little time timers. I think Pomodoro is uh, the brand, but they look like tomatoes. You set it for 20 minutes, do one thing for 20 minutes. When the timer goes off, do a different thing for 20 minutes. When the timer goes off again, go back and do the first thing or a third thing. And that way you're kind of keeping your mind fresh by changing subjects without burning out on a single topic. Um, some of these other strategies are kind of outlined in the chapter and I would encourage you to read them. So what have we talked about today? Poor time management can be can result in high costs, loss of graduation. Time management in college is different than what you've experienced in high school or previous learning experiences. And there are all different kinds of ways that you can effectively prepare yourself for being a good time manager and class. That is our presentation. I just wanted to go look at our activities this week, which um, remain being due on Sunday. So I should have not unshared the screen, but I did because I'm dumb. So we have a discussion board that's due Sunday at midnight that relates to Tim Urban's famous head TED Talk, Inside the Mind of a Master Procrastinator. That's a very funny video. I'd recommend really, really giving the time for that, You know, making a post about it, and then responding to a classmate's post. And then your four-week feedback. You should have gotten your four-week feedback now via email. Take a look at that and you know, kind of think on it a little bit based on your feedback. Answer these two kind of open-ended questions. And if you did not 
get your week four feedback, go ahead and submit an assignment that says, I did not get week four feedback, but here's my GPA based on my grades in Panther Learn. Those are our two activities for this week. While I have your attention, I'll direct you towards week eight. In week eight, you have to read chapter 11, which is all about wellness, which is important. And our final activity is a discussion board on managing stress. I actually, this is no longer accurate. I actually got rid of this other thing, the Panther Essentials Final Evaluation. So I'm going to delete that here and you're going to watch me work in real time. Okay, now our final assignment is due Sunday, March 5th. Any missing assignments that you haven't turned in from the course of the semester are also due Sunday at March 5th. Anything beyond Sunday, March 5th will not be included in the calculation of your final grade. This will be counted as zeros. So hopefully, you know, everybody's moving right along, doing good work. And um, we're going to finish the semester off with good grades. Okay, I think that's it for me today and for this week. I will see you all on Monday. Conversation about wellness and our very last meeting of the semester for ODU 102. Everyone take care.